Good morning, everybody. Thank you for uh, tuning in and uh, listening to the broadcast. Uh, we're pleased that uh, we're able to uh, uh, minister once again virtually. We've had to close down the church temporarily. Uh, and so uh, uh, we're doing this from my home here uh, in Noblesville. So, so thank you for uh, tuning in. Uh, and and listening to the message anyhow there'll be no preliminaries just the ministry of the word and so uh, i i want to begin by uh reading a small portion of of chapter 16 of the book of luke uh and uh, just for your uh preliminary information this is the story of uh, of the rich man and Lazarus. And so let me just uh, begin to read with verse 19 of Luke chapter 16. So if you have your Bible there, please open it up to that passage. Uh, Beginning with verse 19, it says, There was a certain rich man which was clothed in purple and fine linen and fared sumptuously every day. And there was a certain beggar named Lazarus, which was laid at his gate full of sores. And desiring to be fed from the crumbs which fell from the rich man's table, moreover the dogs came and licked his sores. And it came to pass that the beggar died and was carried by the angels into Abraham's bosom. The rich man also died and was buried and in hell he lifted up his eyes being in torments may god bless the reading of his word to our hearts let's pray together father in heaven we ask now in the name of jesus that you'll take these uh, thoughts uh, this morning and uh, uh, lay them on our hearts with great intensity and may we uh, realize how important it is uh, to make sure that our loved ones are saved. And so I pray now that you bless the ministry and preaching of the word. And we'll thank you for it in Jesus' name. Amen. What we have here, ladies and gentlemen, is, is a, a story of two beggars. One uh, begged in this life and the other begged in the life to come. Uh, One begged for food, and the other begged for mercy. But in contrast of these two, uh, they were poles apart, absolutely poles apart. Uh, For instance, uh, the rich man, uh, he lived no doubt in a palatial gated mansion. Uh, because he was extremely rich. And the poor man, uh, the beggar, no doubt lived on the streets. Uh, the, the rich man, of course, was, was very, very wealthy, and, and uh, the beggar had nothing. Uh, the rich man uh, dressed in purple and fine linen, and uh, the, the, the poor man, uh, the beggar himself, uh, was probably... Uh, had to wear the tattered hand-me-down rags of others, and so and so these these two men were poles apart as it relates to their their lifestyle. Uh, one lived sumptuously every day, and the beggar, of course, lived from uh, moment to moment, hand to mouth, and so. So uh, thinking of the, 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 the elements that separated them, there it was one element that, that brought them together. And we see that in verse 22 with these words, and it came to pass. Notice in your Bible, and it came to pass. You say, what was it that came to pass? Well, they both died. Died, I mean, death is the lowest common denominator because it, it affects everybody. The Bible tells us that it's appointed unto man once to die, 
and after this the judgment. So, so both of them died. One, uh, Lazarus died and was carried by the angels into Abraham's bosom, which was uh, typifies the paradise, uh, the 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 wonderful part of the the abode of the dead that everybody went to when they died. Uh, it was a. Uh, one side was was paradise the other side was the place of torment and so and so uh, uh Lazarus went to paradise on the other hand we have uh uh we have the rich man uh he, he died too and was simply buried no fanfare no bugles no no trumpets no entourage uh, no uh any kind of funeral procession. It just simply says the rich man died and was buried. That's all. Just buried. And so, and so, uh, it was the, it was the death factor that brought them together. And, and, uh, immediately, uh, we see, uh, how that the, the rich man realized very quickly after he was in hell just for five minutes that this was not a place that he wanted anybody to come. And so, and so, uh, uh, wading through the whole process of the chapter, we come to this passage in verse 26. Uh, or verse 27, rather. And I want to read that to you. It says, Then he said, I pray thee, therefore, Father, that thou wouldest send him, that's Lazarus, send him to my father's house. Send him to my father's house. I want you to underscore that in your Bible because that's the, that's the burden of missions. That's the burden of soul winning. And that's, that's really, uh, the, the burden of the Bible. Uh, God, uh, sent his only begotten son into the world to die on a cross, a horrible, horrible death on the cross. Uh, and, and for one reason, and that's to keep people out of hell. And so uh, suddenly the rich man uh, became uh, an evangelist. He, he became a soul winner, as it were, uh, while he's in hell because he didn't want uh, his brothers to come there. Uh, and so, and so uh, there, there are basically four reasons why his why the rich man didn't want his brothers to come to this place. And let me, uh, let me just share something with you uh, before we get into those four principles. Uh, 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 you know, when we think of missions, uh, we think of putting some money in the offering plate and, and give it to missionaries so they can cross the oceans and... Uh, uh, win the teeming millions uh, to Christ. Uh, but we forget, we forget that missions uh, begins at home. Uh, when Jesus said to his disciples, right before he went back to heaven, he said, but ye shall receive power after that the Holy Ghost has come upon you and ye shall be witnesses unto me both in Jerusalem Judea, Samaria, and the uttermost parts of the earth. Jerusalem. Why put Jerusalem first? It's because that's where they lived. That's where their families were. That's where their friends were. You see, you see, folk, uh, missions always has to begin at home. It begins with those who live in your house, those who eat at your table, those who sleep in your beds. They missioned, uh, you, you know, I, I've always thought, uh, wouldn't it be tragic? Wouldn't it be tragic to, to make sure that your children uh, have the finest education, have the finest health care? have the finest clothes, uh, have the finest of everything in life. 
and 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 take care of their body uh, and their mind and everything that pertains to life, uh, and then and then realize that one day the children die and go to hell. That that would be the most tragic thing in the world, and yet yet that's happening all over the world. And especially here in America, we are so adamant about our children getting the finest things in life. And we, we, we lay the emphasis on the body and we just don't do anything about the soul. And it's the soul that's going to live forever, not the body. The body is going to go back to dust. Uh, from whence it came. But the soul is going to live on forever. And so we need to, to give attention to the soul. And that's suddenly, suddenly the rich man became aware of five brothers that were lost. Somebody, somebody had to go to these five brothers and win them to Christ. Somebody had to go witness to them. Somebody had to do that. And, 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 and the rich man thought, oh, if I could just get Lazarus uh, to go because he'd, he was risen from the dead. And, and Abraham said, no, no, that, that isn't going to work. He said, if they won't believe Moses and the prophets, they're not going to believe anybody who has risen from the dead. And don't you know, that's, that's apparently true. Because here we know that Jesus Christ died and was buried and rose again the third day. And yet, and yet the world still rejects Jesus, uh, the resurrected Christ. It's interesting to me that the world uh, uh, still has some affinity for God but they don't much care for his son. And yet, and yet, and yet God said, this is my beloved son in whom I am well pleased. Hear ye him. Uh, and Jesus himself said, you can't get into heaven unless you put your trust in me. Now, that, that's, that's pretty simple. If you don't put your trust in me, you're not going to get into God's heaven. And so, and so here, here's the rich man. He is suffering in the, in, in the torments and agonies of hell. And suddenly he becomes aware and, and concerned about his brothers. And I thought as I read this, I'm so thankful to God for my brother uh, who took an interest in me. Not only when, when my father left home when I was eight, my brother Lee, the preacher brother, uh, became uh, the, the, the heir apparent uh, to raising the kids. And so, and so I learned from my brother, first of all, uh, how to learn. I learned from my brother how to listen. But I learned most of all how to live. And because he won me to Christ, I thank God for my brother. And here's a man who had five brothers that he was concerned about. And if somebody didn't get to them, they would likewise come where he is and be in torments. Now, l listen to these five, five reasons. And by the way, these five reasons are still active today. Number one. There's no mercy in hell. No mercy. In, in the, the scripture says in verse 24, uh, And he cried and said, Father Abraham, have mercy on me, and send Lazarus that he may dip the tip of his finger in water, and cool my tongue, for I am tormented in this flame. But he couldn't do that. He couldn't do that. There were, listen, folk, mercy it must always laid, lay over against justice. 
And justice is always what we deserve. Now, we talk about justice today like it was a flippant thing. Uh, but justice is simply getting what we deserve. And if there's no mercy, then we get what we deserve. And if everybody, I mean really, if everybody got what they deserved, they'd be in hell. Because that's where we deserve to be. But, but up here on earth, uh, uh, we can have mercy. We can have uh, mercy's twin sister, grace. Grace is getting something that you don't deserve. That's salvation. That's a home in heaven. Mercy, on the other hand, is not getting something you do deserve. And so here's, here's the rich man. He lived a life of meanness, a life of selfishness, uh, uh, uncaring, and he winds up in hell. Now, now uh, the thing is, uh, he, he's, he's there because he deserves to be there. And, and there's no mercy in hell. There's just justice. That's all. There's just, we, uh, people get what they deserve when they go there. So, so uh, that's the first thing. And when you, uh, when you be concerned about your, your, your brothers and your sisters, remember, remember, uh, uh, that if they don't get saved, there's no mercy where they're going to go. You see, you see, uh, in, instead of people being so concerned about about this life, they better be concerned about the life to come. They better be concerned about where they're going to go when they die. And 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 if they go to hell, then there's no mercy there. Just justice, that's all. Notice the second thing, though. Uh, in, verse, uh, in verse 25, uh, there's no forgetting. Think about that. Up here on earth, we forget everything. I mean, we forget our birthdays. We forget uh, anniversaries. We forget appointments. Uh, we forget... I mean, I mean, everything. I mean, sometimes people forget, uh, forget their names. I, I remember one time I was at the nursing home in Tipton and, uh, uh, and I was going to be preaching to the whole crowd. And, and so first of all, I got there a little early. So I went around and uh, shook hands with the, with the men and the women and, 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 and I asked them their name. And they gave me their name and I visited with them for just a moment. And, and then I went on to the next and then the next. And, and I came to this one lady and, uh, and uh, I said to her, what is your name, ma'am? And she said, uh, she didn't remember her name. And, and, and I said to her, now, just you, you think about it and, and I'll go on to some others and then I'll come back to you. And so, and so uh, I, I visited with others and then I finally came back to her and, and I said, uh, have you remembered your name yet? And, and she said, yes, my name is Mary. I said, I got a daughter-in-law named Mary and she's wonderful. I said, you're probably a wonderful lady too. And so then, then I did the dumbest thing I ever did in my life. I said to her, what's your last name? <laughs> she was fortunate just to give me her first name. So, so you know, we, we, we forget. We forget. But in hell, there's no forgetting. Every mean 
and rotten thing a person has ever done in life. It's right at their fingertips. They never forget it. So the rich man, the rich man, uh, you know, all the mean things he did, all the, you know, uh, uh, swindling widow ladies out of their fortunes and so on. You know, he he always remembered that. He, he would never be able to forget it. You know, a, a Abraham said, son, remember that in then thy lifetime you received all the good things. Yeah, but he, but he didn't mention how he got those good things. But he never would forget. Uh, you know, we think of uh, how wonderful it would be to be able to have total recall of everything. It would be the worst curse in the world. Because, because there's lots of things we want to forget. But in hell, there's no forgetting. And, and 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 the rich man understood that, and so he wanted to see his brothers saved, and so so he said, "Send send send Lazarus to my father's house, because I've got five brothers there." Notice number three, and 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 this may be the worst. There's no reprieve. Verse. 26, notice, it said, and beside all this, between us and you, there's a great gulf fixed. Fixed. So that they which would pass from hence to you cannot, neither can they pass to us that would come from, th from thence. In, in other words, there's this, there's this uh, compartment on the one side where where you have paradise, and and then then on the other side uh, you 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 have this awful place called hell, place of torment, and in between there's a great gulf, and there's no bridge. You could they could see across the gulf, but they couldn't. They couldn't get from one side to the other. It was fixed. You know, up here on the earth, uh, we're great at fixing things. You know, our car breaks down, we fix it. Wind comes and uh, takes our half our roof off, we, we call the roofer and they fix it. We, we break bones on our body and we go to the... the, the the, uh, the the surgeon and he he fixes it, but it's never it's never permanent. All of our fixing up here is never permanent. But down in hell, it was permanent. There's no no reprieve, no escape, no getting out, no second chance. Uh, there are those who might believe in purgatory. And believe me, folk, there's no purgatory. There's no, there's no place down there where your sins can be purged totally and then lifted to the, and go to the other side. There, the gulf is fixed. I mean, we're talking, uh, we're talking uh, the number of hours in a day. It's fixed. We're talking about the number of of uh, weeks in a in a a, a a week a year. It's fixed. We're talking about uh, the formula, say, for water. It's fixed. We're talking about the way of salvation. It's fixed. You can't change it. And, 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 and the rich man, the rich man realized suddenly that, that there's no reprieve. And it was after that, it was after that, he said, somebody, somebody go to my father's house because I've got five brothers that are lost. 
And if they ever come here, they're here permanently. You see, folk, there's no, there's no getting out of hell once you get there. It's permanent. And so, note, I mean, now, now, uh, remember, there's no, there's no mercy. There's no forgetting. There's no reprieve. And fourthly, there's no hope. No hope. Uh, if, 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 if the rich man's brother, if, if the rich man expected somebody from the other side to go up there and, and win his brothers to Christ, it wasn't going to happen. Abraham said, no, that, that isn't going to work. We, we can't do that. They have, the, they have Moses and they have the prophets. And, 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 and now we have the New Testament. And if they won't believe this book, then there's no hope. No hope. Uh, Jesus said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man cometh unto the Father but by me. And that's in the book. You know, you know, people say, oh, I believe in God. But they don't believe the book. And apart from, uh, apart from this book, you can't know God. Faith cometh by hearing. And hearing by the word of God. See, so so there's no there there's no hope for those who refuse to believe the book, no hope. And 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 I think that the rich man must have understood that. And so he wanted somebody to go and talk to them. How many people have gotten saved apart from? Somebody else, uh, my friend, uh, said uh, one, you know, missions, missions basically is one beggar telling another beggar where to get food. That's what missions is. And, and you and I, uh, uh, while we're up here, uh, we have a responsibility, first of all, to our family. We've got to win our family to Christ. We don't dare, we don't dare let our family go to hell. And, and that's what the, the rich man who was there, that was the emphasis. Uh, send somebody to my father's house. And, and because my five brothers are lost. So, so uh, uh, missions, ladies and gentlemen, begins at home. And then, and then it reaches out uh, to your friends. It reaches out to your neighbors. It reaches out to those that you work with. It reaches out uh, to, uh, to, 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 to strangers on the street reaches out to to ethnic groups uh, someplace else but it reaches out uh, and and finally gets to the uttermost parts of the earth but it begins in Jerusalem it begins at home send somebody to my father's house may god bless this message to our hearts let's pray together father we want to thank you for the word of God. We're grateful that you've saved us. And yet, Father, you saved us for a purpose. You've saved us for a reason. And that we might, we might share the gospel, the good news, to people who are lost. Send, send somebody to my father's house. Must be must be on our lips and our minds and our hearts every, every day of the year, every hour of the day. 
we must be so conscious. People are dying and going to hell. And we've got to do something about keeping people out of there. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen.